Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. You can find links to everything I'm going to talk about below this video including links to my website, my social media and how to sign up to my newsletter. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Whether you're a brand new viewer or a returning viewer, thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing it helps me a lot we've had a lot of new subscribers recently so thank you very much i really appreciate that and if you want to leave me a comment i love reading your comments so just leave me a comment about anything related to today's episode or if there's any topics you'd like me to talk about any tutorials you would like me to record things like that do leave me a, a comment as well so in today's episode i've got a new pattern to share I've got a new magazine design to share I've got some finished objects I've got some yarn purchases and some new cast ons uh, I've got two finished objects to share so lots of stuff to get on with so let's get started before I start I just want to mention quickly um, that I am currently having a bit of a clear out a few months ago I cleared out loads of handbags that I no longer wanted to keep and I finally got around to starting to list them on Vinted. I don't know whether Vinted is just in the UK or whether it's worldwide, but um, I'll put my Vinted link below. And um, if you are interested in a handbag, I'm listing a few other things as well, but so far it's mostly handbags. And there is one poncho, which is brand new. Um, so if you're interested, do take a look at my Vinted link. If you're not in the UK and you're still interested, um, let me know. And I might be able to take it off Vinted and sell it to you kind of privately, I guess. Um, but shipping would cost more and you may be liable for um, import duties in your country. So I just want to mention that and I'll put that link below. let's start with what I've finished so you may not be surprised that I finished these because they were nearly finished in my last podcast so these are my yarn badges no yarn the yarn badger socks rainbow socks um they came as two 50 gram skeins and I cast them while I was in Norway and uh, they had a contrasting heel and toe I can't remember how much yarn was left over from that I think it was 20 grams I don't think there was much left there wouldn't have been enough to do a cuff as well i don't think um and they match just about perfectly which is really good because even when i bought the yarn that has like 250 grams and you're supposed to get matching socks i don't always end up with them being matching even though i do count my rounds and things like that but these ended up matching so i'm really pleased with that love them i haven't worn them yet as i said because i wanted to film them first they look a bit a little bit baggy on my sock blockers but they fit my feet perfectly so i knitted these from the toe up um used the contrast yarn for the toe and then i did stopping stitch put it in some waist yarn for the afterthought heel knitted up i first i thought i wanted the leg to be 100 rounds and then and i normally do 30 rounds of rib and then i thought that's quite a lot of knitting to do maybe i'll make them 90 rounds i don't think 10 rounds makes a lot of difference but um so after i had done 60 rounds of stocking stitch on the leg i started the rib and then i thought actually i will make them 100 rounds so instead of doing 30 rounds of rib at the top which is what i normally do i actually did 40 rounds which is fine i'm happy with that and this is a sparkle yarn i, I can't find the label for this yarn um but i will put in the notes below this video because I think I wrote down the details of the yarn in my last um, notes of my last video. So I will copy that and put it below. But I think it was called something like Neon Steps. And it's gorgeous. Um, it's I used my Aventudas sock pattern. Which has a choice of toe up or top down. With two toes and two afterthought heels. On these I just did a normal wedge toe. And then I did my round um, 
after good hair, which I really like. So I'm really happy with those and they can now get taken off this sock blocker, um, fold it up and put in my drawer because I can't wait to wear those. This is the hat. I think I talked about this in the last episode. Um, or maybe I didn't. I cast this on, on the 10th of February. I have started keeping track of my projects in a little book. So I just make a note of when I cast on, when I cast off the yarn I used. Oh, having said that, the, these socks, just notice, is the Neil Steps Superwash Merino Sparkle um, from the Yarn Badger. So it is in here. Um, those the socks I cast on on the 3rd of February and I finished them on the 9th of February that was mainly because I knitted on them quite a lot the last few days in Norway and then I um, had a long travel day on the way home so I got a lot of stuff done then and then I finished them a few days ago um, what's the date today hang on it's the 19th of this so yeah so it's a few days ago since I finished them I think I finished them maybe like a day after I recorded the last podcast and then um this hat I cast on on the 10th uh, of uh, February and I finished it today, which is the 19th. So let me try it on. Um, I knitted this one top down. I must admit, I haven't been, never been that successful at knitting hats, but I think I've cracked it now. So obviously you can wear it a bit slouchy if you want to. I don't think slouchy hats are really that in anymore, so I'm not going to wear it like that. So I knitted it. Um, as I said top down I did look just like a I don't know whether that's that visible like a square shaping at the top and then until I got to the number of stitches I wanted then I did um, enough stocking stitch till it kind of got to the top of my ears I think and then I did rib and I made the rib long enough so I can fold it up I must admit I'm not a huge fan of hats I don't think hats look that good on me, to be perfectly honest. But I don't like um, getting too hot. And I do get quite warm when I go walking. But there are times, because especially when it's windy and things like that, where I do need a hat or if it's very, very cold. But And I do have a few, well, two or three um, hats knitted in full ply. But I do sometimes find that it gets a little bit chilly because the... Obviously, knitted fabric doesn't keep the wind out. So sometimes I find it gets a little bit too chilly. So when I went to Norway, I knitted a hat in DK yarn, which I talked about in the last podcast. But I think that's a little bit too thick for me most of the time, especially here in Cornwall. It doesn't really get that cold here. And in fact, this last week has been really warm. It's been kind of like 10, 12 degrees most days. I mean, we've had quite a lot of sunshine, so it's been quite warm. So I thought if I knit this with a long enough rib so i can fold the rib up then i can have like a double layer over my ears because they tend to get cold but then it's not too thick on top so i won't get too hot so i really like this i'm having problems with the light today because it's very sunny and it's the afternoon so the sun is coming straight in so i've had to close the curtains which makes the light seem very strange but i finished this last night and i put it on um one of those tubular cord things Try on cords, stitch holder cords, whatever you want to call them. And um, I'm really happy. And I tried it on. And then 
I was really happy with it but I didn't cut, start casting off last night and then this morning I started casting off and I wasn't sure what cast off to use I quite like the stone cast off for like a semi stretchy cast off but it is very slow and I do have I think about 132 stitches on here so I thought that's going to take a bit of time and I just couldn't be bothered to do that to be quite honest so I tried casting off in rib because sometimes that can be a bit stretchier so I tried casting off loosely in rib but I wasn't happy with that that wasn't quite stretchy enough it was stretchier than a normal stretchier than a normal cast off normally is but it wasn't that stretchy so then I actually started doing a sewn cast off and I probably only did like six stitches and then I thought, ah, no, there's the Icelandic cast off, which I don't use very often. I thought maybe that would look good. So I did the Icelandic cast off. So I thought I had a tutorial for the Icelandic cast off, but I don't think I do. But I might record one. Um, but if not, if you Google it on YouTube, search for it on YouTube, you'll find them. I think I learned it from, um, what she called, Very Pink Knits. She has lots of really good tutorials. So I don't know how easy it is to see because I don't know whether it will focus on it but can you see it? it's a really pretty cast off I don't know how visible it is to see because obviously this yarn's quite thin and it's done on 3mm needles I think um, let's, let's have a look. I've still got the needles in here yeah 3mm needles oh that didn't look good so I really like it it's a little bit kind of um slouchy but not too slouchy i don't really like the sort of really slouchy look where you have like kind of hanging down at the back but i quite like it i like i said earlier i'm not usually that keen on hats but i do quite like this actually and now i've got it on properly i might just keep it on for the rest of the podcast Um, i hope we get a bit of colder weather it's only well just over halfway through february so we might get some colder weather a couple of years ago a few years ago when I taught at Edinburgh Yarn Fest so I guess that was like 2017 maybe because I don't think it was 2018 2017 or 2019 I can't remember um but um might have been 2019 who knows anyway a few years ago um we actually got snowed in I think that was March and we got snowed in because there was snow in Devon and Exeter Airport had to close there was snow in Edinburgh as well but not as much but we got snowed in because of the snow in Devon. Um, so, the, you know, we may get some more cold weather. Who knows? Weather is crazy at the moment anyway, so we'll see. Anyway, I've got quite a bit of yarn left. I was wondering whether I had enough to make some matching hand warmers. Um, I don't know. Um, let's just, because I haven't actually weighed this. So let's grab my tiny little scales. These are easily available on Amazon. Um, so let me just weigh it okay so I've got 44 nearly 45 grams left but I don't know whether that's going to be enough for a pair of hand warmers or not um, I wear my I have loads of hand warmers cashmere ones from um, turtle doves here in the UK and I wear those a lot so I don't know whether I would wear matching hand warmers to this one but it would be quite nice and this does match my new cowl which you've seen me wear a lot I wore it a lot in Norway it's called um course which means hug in Norway and this is the same I don't know whether actually I'm not sure that it is exactly the same colorway difficult to see because the yarn's gone lights funny in here but it's almost identical i think this is called flamingos where's the label gone I'm just quite warm with this cowl on and the hat on so this is called it's the okay it's the yarn for the hat let's get organized now the spectrum fiber and it is twisted sock it's 365 meters per 100 gram it's 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon and it is called it's the flamingo colorway and that's been in my stash for a while and this yarn that I use for this cow and this brioche headband, which I haven't released, um, is was called Flamingos on Parade. And that's a DK yarn. So I don't know whether it's like exactly the same yarn, but it's certainly very similar. So this hat will go perfectly with this cow. 
I was thinking about unpicking this cover back because it is quite long so I can fold it over um, and it is quite warm and I must admit temperatures now is too warm um, but this looks quite nice doesn't it so let's talk about this cow this is this, this is the Kuls cow k-o-s Kuls that's how it's pronounced in Norwegian Kuls can mean a hug uh, if you give someone a Kuls it's giving someone a hug um, the verb Kulsa it's kind of to have like a cozy time, nice food, sweets, candles, warm, cozy, a bit like the Danish word hygge, which has been so popular in the last few years. We do use the word hygge in Norway as well, but probably we would say cool more. Um, and yeah, so as this feels a bit like a hug, I decided to call it cool. Um, so the pattern is available now. So let me take this off. Uh, the pattern is actually written for this version, which is the Silk Blend, Manasl Uruguay Silk Blend version, um, which looks like that. I think I'm going to have to take this hot hat off because it's a bit too warm, I think. So that's how that knits up. You can fold it over if you don't want it that high. You can make it longer or shorter. Measure this. I'm right on how much yarn it used, and you used 65 grams in total. So I used 250 gram skeins of Models of Uruguay, a solid plum purpley color. I think it's called plum, and a variegated color which has a lot of green in it. Um, and it's knitted in the round, very easy. So if you know how to do brioche you can definitely knit this cowl and if you're new to brioche and you've just learned brioche this is a good cowl to practice on um and i do have a video on how to knit brioche in the round which is linked in the pattern um so the pattern is out now it is uh 25 off until the end of february i'll put all the details below and i always put the discount code on the pattern page so if you go to the pattern page after february 2020 there won't be a discount anymore so make sure you sign up to my newsletter so you don't miss out so you can wear it like that so this version is the same version but made a bit longer so um that's kind of where the original version finished and then i just carried on so you can kind of carry on you flip the colors every so many rows to give this effect that's called syncopate brioche and i really really like it it's really nice um I've worn those a lot, worn them a lot in Norway, as you may have seen if you follow me on social media. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with those. And I'll put the link to the pattern below. It's available in Ravelry and Payhip. And talking about brioche cowls, if you are interested in um, learning to knit the brioche cowls I've designed this winter, and if you live in Devon or you can get to Devon, um, I'm teaching a brioche cow workshop at Spinner Yarn. I'm just looking at my book so I don't forget. But I'm teaching a brioche cow workshop at Spinner Yarn on the 13th of April. Um, and you can then choose between the Kuls brioche cow, the Delicia brioche cow, which is a bit more difficult, or the um, Delightful brioche cow which is a bit between the two. So the course is the easiest one. The list is the most, most difficult one and that one's in between. But they use a lot of the same techniques. So if you have just learned to knit brioche and you just want to practice basic brioche and knitting brioche in the round, you can choose that one. If you want to learn increases and decreases, then you can choose that one. If you've done a bit of increases and decreases and you just want to improve your practice, it will practice, improve your techniques, then you can choose this one. So I will put the link to Spinny on below. You need to go, go to them and uh, book it, which I think probably means calling them. Um, so that is on the, what did I say? 13th of April uh, at Spinny on in Bobby Trace in Devon. And then on the 2nd of March, so in a couple of weeks, I think, or probably a week after this video goes live i'm teaching continental knitting so if you again if you can get the spinny yarn in probably tracy devon it's just south of exeter um so if you can get there uh and you can see learning uh continental knitting from me in person then that workshop you'd really enjoy that workshop it's a while since i've taught continental knitting in person so i'm really looking forward to it because i used to teach it a lot and i haven't taught it very much for the last few years i'm really excited about that when you take my in-person continental knitting class you also get my online continental knitting course for free afterwards 
So at the end of the workshop, I take everyone's email addresses and then when I get home, I send you a link to take my online complex knitting course for free. Um, so that basically, if you don't remember what you're doing, you've got reminder videos and things in the online course. So I'll put all the links to that below. And then on the 4th of May, I'm teaching um, shawl shaping, also at Spinny Yarn, where we're going to look at different shawl shapes and how to achieve those shawl shapes and how to add stitch patterns and things like that. Um, you don't have to be an expert knitter to do this, just if you fancy experimenting or exploring and learning some new shapes. Uh, all you need to be able to do is knit and purl and cast on and cast off. Um, nothing fancy. You don't even need to know how to knit lace if you don't want to. So, um, that's on the, what did I say, 4th of May uh, at Spinny Yarn in Bobby Tracy in Devon. So I'll put Spinny Yarn website below and contact them for full details of the workshops and to book your place. Okay, let's get back to what's on my needles. Um, right, everything's got a bit of a mess here now because I didn't think things around. Uh, so I cast on for a pair of socks um, because I hadn't cast on for a pair of socks since I finished the rainbow socks. After the rainbow socks, I cast on for the hat and that was kind of meant to be my easy out and about knitting. And to be quite honest, I've been working on it quite a lot. <laughs> Not just when I'm out and about, but when I'm just sitting in the lounge in the evening knitting. So that's why I got finished so quickly. So I cast them for another pair of socks. This is um, Spectrum Fibre again. Got this at the end of last year, I think. Uh, it is Twisted Sock, 8% um, Merino, 20% Nylon. So it's the same yarn as this pink yarn um, in the colorway Agua. So I've cast on, I'm doing toe up. Um, using my Venturas pattern again which I'll link below and I've just done the toe toe finish where that white marker is and a few extra rounds haven't worked on it very much I cast on on Friday I did yesterday or Friday I can't remember then we went to Plymouth yesterday so I knitted a little bit in a coffee shop that's about all I've done really on that one I'm also about to cast on for another pair of socks so I got this yarn when I went to Norway it's Lang um super socks color six ply um i asked simon if he fancied those so he said yes i'm going to cast on for those for simon um, i think i'm going to wind it this evening i cast on this evening um and i might try and prioritize these over these we'll see um but i'm going to wind this into two 50 grams 
because this is 150 grams and it has 390 meters and I've knitted with don't think it's this one but with the equivalent in a different brand before but it's a while ago so I not 100% sure exactly how long I can make the legs so if I do toe up then I can just weigh the yarn and keep an eye on when I run out of yarn and then um, stop knitting. I think I'm going to do this in rib uh, using my Ventura's pattern with an afterthought heel uh, toe up so I'm going to try and cast off of those this afternoon. And then my final work in progress so you may have noticed that i have not mentioned a shawl i cast on in norway i have not worked on it at all since the last podcast and i need to get back to working on it what's holding me back is the mohair in it like today i'm wearing a black top and i kind of think if i work on it i just end up getting covered in green and pink mohair so i'm kind of i kind of have like a love-hate relationship with mohair or fluffy alpaca um i like it i really like the look of it and <laughs> it's very popular at the moment but i also don't really like wearing and knitting with it because of the fluff so i will finish it because i do like it and i'm also going to get it knitted up in um manos uruguay fino and i'd like to get that done so the pattern is ready in time for wonderwool at the end of april um i think i'll probably ask one of my sample knitters to knit the fino version so I need to really crack on with that because I'm probably about halfway through. So I need to crack on with that, finish the pattern, finish knitting it, and then ask one of my sample knitters to knit the second version. Um, but I've been a bit kind of lazy in a bit of a kind of, I guess maybe a bit of design funk since I've been back from Norway. I worked on quite a lot of design submissions for magazines. So I've submitted to two magazines, I think. Um, so it's been quite busy from that point of view as well. So the other thing I've been working on quite a lot is my crochet blanket. Um, last time I mentioned this in the podcast, which was sometime in January, um, it wasn't in the last podcast, definitely. I put a marker in here. So that's where I got to. And since then, I've knitted all of that. So from there up to there. And I'm. it's quite wide. It's kind of like a single width. The last three rows I did was the leftover yarn from my sparkly socks. Um, it's interesting when you use the self-striping yarn because it goes quite a long way. So it's this, this and this, those three rows. So I'm basically just taking two strands of four ply or sock yarn, holding them together and crocheting. And yeah, quite happy with it. Um, I've been working on it quite a lot since I came back from Norway. And I really need to, I don't mind working on a little bit every day, like sort of the last half an hour before I go to bed or something, but I've probably been doing a bit more than that and I need to get back to finishing that um, shawl I started in Norway and spending less time knitting on this blanket. So the last colour I work with, I've cut a yarn, um, I've left quite a long end, then I'm going to join in a new yarn. I crochet over my ends as I go. I do have a video on that, so I'll link that below. So that's all the projects I've got to talk about. So let's talk, let's talk about a magazine design. So this is the latest issue of Let's Knit. I have some sad news about Let's Knit. Um, I found out last week and then later that day it was actually made public and people were chatting about it on social media. But sadly Let's Knit is closing. Um, the company that owned Let's Knit was bought up by a bigger publisher a few years ago and the new owners are basically closing um, Aceville. From what I understand, they're closing Aceville Publications, which was the company they used to own Let's Knit. And all the magazines that they acquired from Aceville are closing. Um, so sadly, that includes Let's Knit, which I'm quite sad about because it was one of the first magazines I started designing for. They got a new editor last 
yeah last summer who i really really like i really like the old editor as well she's fantastic but they got a new editor and then a lot of the stuff who work for them have worked for them for a long time at least for as long as i've been designing for them i don't think they've been around that long when i started designing for them either so um yeah i feel quite sad about that um i don't know when the last issue is going to be i have three i think three things two or three things that i've sent them that haven't been published yet and i don't know what's going to happen i haven't been told when the last issue will be yet so um feel really sorry for the staff um who may lose their jobs and all the designers and contributors who will lose one source of, in of income um so yeah feel quite sad but anyway these things happen so this is not the pattern i have in this issue but that was the poncho i designed for last uh, month's issue which they photograph with the pair of socks that are in this week's or this month's um issue so who's designed those socks joe Alport. so that's what the socks look like but i do like it when they model um things together with um other things so loads of accessories oh that's also that's my poncho from the last issue model with a bag in this issue so that was issue 100 and 93 i guess um oh and this is the pattern from this issue so it's a lovely fairly simple asymmetrical shawl quite big you can make it smaller if you want to so if you don't want to make it that big just make it till it's the length you want it and cast off it's very easy um it has like a sawtooth edging along this edge and just like a yarn over pattern so if you're new to shawls or new to asymmetrical shawls it basically gives you a chance to just focus on the shaping while the pattern is quite simple so it's perfect to wear just wrap around your neck as a shawl um, as a scarf rather um and yeah it's really simple pretty one of my sample knitters knitted it so thank you to her uh if she's watching um it's called vintage rose and it's um done as a mother's day make for mum um mother says in march so yeah it's a fun shawl um looks great simple and it is knitted in cascade yarns heritage silk in coral rose and it takes 200 gram skeins but like i said you can make it smaller if you want to fairly easy shawl um heritage silk is lovely to knit with i've used it for quite a few things now and i really really like it um so yeah it's got like a simple double yarn over pattern and then oh in the next issue and i hope this will come out because i've just seen i didn't i've noticed this before when i looked through but i've just seen the page for the advertising next issue Ta -da! guess whose pattern that is so that is my pattern and yes it is a steak cardigan so yes it is a steak cardigan it was knitted by one of my sample knitters she knitted it and then i steaked it and i did actually record a video of me steaking it um i do teach steaking which is when you knit stuff in the round and then you cut it i do teach that in my stranded scandinavian stranded color work and steaking online course and workshops um but i did record like a quick video of me doing it it's not like a step-by-step -step tutorial because i have my online course for that but just like a um Kind of video how i did it um so yeah i'm really excited about that so i do hope the next issue will come out i would have thought it will because they must have done all the work for it now but i'm really excited to see that that's fabulous so that will be out hopefully in march i guess see so yeah, i'm quite sad about let's knit but um there might be other things happening we'll let's see so some quite nice uh, other patterns in here um I'm not going to do like a detailed look through, but that's a look at all the garments that are in this issue. So it's some really nice spring, springy patterns. And yeah, um, if anyone from Let's Knit watches, I'm really, really sorry. I feel really, really, really sympathetic, really sad. Um, I hope you all get new jobs quickly. Um, and I just want to say I'm really sad that they're going. Um, if anyone from the parent company of Let's Knit watches, don't close Let's Knit, please. It's a fab magazine. So, yeah, I do feel quite sad. 
uh, I will let you know when the last issue is going to be out. I don't know when the last issue will be, but that is very, very sad news. What else are we doing? Oh, another thing which I must not forget to mention was that this morning I was watching a video on YouTube and I'll link below this video and it was uh, the lovely Irina from Fibre Chats who's interviewed me a couple of times. She was interviewing the lovely Belinda who's the owner of the Knitting Hotel. I was at the Knitting Hotel last weekend and I'm going back there next weekend for two days. So the Knitting Hotel is beautiful. It is in Dawlish in Devon on the coast. It's got beautiful uninterrupted sea views. Um, it's uh, reachable by train. So if you want to go there by train, you can do the train stops just down the road. It is a bit of a walk up the hill. Um, or you can drive there. They've got loads of parking. But it's just such a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. And it was lovely to hear Belinda being interviewed by Arena. I learned a few new things that I didn't know. Belinda is just such a fascinating, lovely woman. Uh, and I love teaching at Knitting Hotel. I especially like it when I do two days because then I get to stay on for the evening. So I normally teach like a Friday and Saturday. So then after we finish the workshop on the Friday, I go across the road where I normally stay at the B&B &B and um, just check into my room, chill for half an hour or so. Then I go back to the Knitting Hotel and I spend the evening with uh, all the guests there. We have fish and chips on the Friday evening and we chat and knit and then I go back to the um the B&B across the road probably about 10 o'clock I try and leave about 10 because I've got to teach the next day um and then I teach on the Saturday and then I go home so I get a little bit of a taste of it the knitters that I've met there the guests I met there have been absolutely amazing they've all been lovely um Belinda is fantastic her assistant Brenda is really lovely and their chef fantastic the food is delicious so if you get a chance to go um do check it out i'll put the link below this video they do book up quite far in advance but it's always worth checking because they may have had cancellations um i teach there loads of other teachers teach there they also do weekends where you just come and hang out and chill i follow belinda on instagram because i know if she has cancellations she will quite often do a shout out in her instagram stories and quite often they're snapped up before the day's out um spoken to a lot of people lately who have been there because they got a cancellation spot so do check it out um and i will link that video below this video as well i'm in dawlish this morning um it's about 20 to 10 i need to head back to the car because i'm teaching at the knitting hotel today but i just got a bit early so i just parked up and thought i'd just get a few minutes of sea air before i go and teach for the day um not raining but it's quite great today and the sea is quite rough uh, so let me show you where I'm going the top of the hill there that grey house there the top at the back that's where I'm I'm wearing my uh, delightful brioche cow and then I'm wearing a sweater that was originally published in Simply Knitting magazine that I was wearing Better head back to the car and go and teach. This is the new seawall in Dawlish, um, and that there is the train line. Uh, the seawall didn't used to be this wide, which is why the water would quite often, when the waves were big, we would storm me. You would either close this line or the waves would crash over the trains. And this is the main train line into the um, South Devon and Cornwall. So if I wanted to get the train from where I live in Cornwall to anywhere past Plymouth, I would have to go past here. And in the winter it was just a nightmare, so hopefully it will be better now. Because that's the sea and that's the train line.
last thing I wanted to talk about was a little purchase I made. So I was teaching a spinny on this week. I was teaching brioche knitting. I forgot to film anything. Brioche is quite an intense workshop. Okay, the light's gone all funny now and it's gone a bit dark. I did buy something. So one of the ladies in my workshop was working with this yarn. It's from Adria Feel and it's called Sedici Superfine Wool, 75% uh, wool, 25% polyamide. It has 260 meters per 50 grams. I got those two colors because they look quite pretty. I'm thinking maybe doing something brioche with it. Maybe another brioche cow or have I done too many brioche cows? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a something knitted flat in brioche i don't know but those two look quite nice together and it's incredibly soft and this lady in my workshop was knitting with it and i thought oh i've never tried it i must try it so i got that um andrea feel is quite a affordable brand it's not too expensive and then i've got another project i want to design for a workshop i'm not going to talk too much about it now but i don't know how much yarn i'm going to need so i've got two of each so this is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Color Lab, which I really, really like. It's a really good all round workhorse, 100% British wool yarn. It's not like super soft. Um, it's not like 100% merino. It's not quite that soft. It doesn't say what type of wool it is. I know some of the other, they use a lot of blue face Leicesters. I don't know whether it's blue face Leicester, but it just says 100% British wool. Spun in Yorkshire. I've been to their mill a few years ago when I first started designing for them. I've done several designs for them over the years. So it's a company I really, really like. And um, I got two of each of these two colours. This colour is called Stormy Grey. And this is the Cerise Pink. And the, it is going to be a stranded colour work pattern. But I'm not going to say anything more about that. But this yarn is 100 grams and it has 225 metres. So I'm going to pass on that. Maybe this week if I get around to getting myself organised. Right, put all that back in the bag to keep it safe. And then I've got another thing which I haven't actually got around to opening properly yet. So this arrived a few days ago from Atomic Knitting. I don't know what these are called. <laughs> I saw them when I ordered. It wasn't actually when I went there to order for. But I think the way you use them is you can put your knitting needle through there and through there and they stop stop your knitting uh, needle stitches from falling off i don't tend to use needle stoppers or those things you can put on the end because it's not normally a problem because i use circular needles but i thought this these were quite cool and i also use these stitch holder cords a lot and i think these are perfect for hang on let me put the needles down these are perfect when I put something on this stitch holder and I want to make sure that it doesn't fall out. These are perfect for sticking through like that. So that's another use for them. So there are quite a few in here. There are one, two, three, four purple. I'm just going to worry. Oh, they worried about loosening them. I just dropped one. Okay, I just dropped one on the floor. So there are four purple and four pink. So really like those i'm going to keep them in this bag for now and then i also got another little thing this is what i went on the website to find um so when i first got these stitch holder cords i got a set from beautiful knitters in london and it came with three cords i think they're slightly different from these and then it came with uh four of these and these are basically used to hold the um needles on here um like that so i got some of those but i don't have that many and i've been thinking i must get some more you can tie the ends together but it's easier to use these so i was thinking i must get some more um and i saw that atomic knitting had them so i got four of those they're like those things that you have to like keep the ties on your winter coat secure and that kind of thing i guess i don't actually know what they're called um but i got four of those this cord is actually hangs on my wall it actually belongs to one of my sample knitters uh she put some stitches on hold sent it back to me to finish it and she put it on hold on one of these and um i haven't got around to sending it back to her normally if 
my sample knitters leave anything in their knitting when they send it back to me like stitch holders and stitch markers and things i normally send it back to them the next time i send them yarn and the last the thing she's knitting for me now the yarn came straight from the yarn company so i haven't sent it to her so i've still got this and i must remember to send it back to her so i think that's it uh let me just look at my list yes that's it so that is it for today thank you very much for joining me i'll put all the links to everything i've talked about below i think this is going to be a little bit longer than i thought it would be but i hope you've enjoyed it um so my priority over the next few weeks is to get back to that show pass on the socks to my husband and start knitting with that Miss Yorkshire Spinners yarn I showed you just now. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And uh, if you don't want to miss an episode, turn on your notifications. So I post videos on YouTube every Thursday and every other Tuesday. I think this week is a one week video. Next week, there's going to be a video on Tuesday on a new design that's going to be in um, knitting magazine um i can't show you the design because the magazine's not out till thursday i think it's out on the day this video goes live but i'm not going to show the design actually yes i can show you the design because i'm pretty sure the magazine comes out on the day this is this video is out so i will show it to you but i will do a video uh which will be out on tuesday where i talk about this design in more detail um so Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.